Hi guys and welcome back. I am here with an energy drink because it's 6 o'clock in the morning because I gotta shoot this in the morning because my wife works in the evening so I gotta take the baby. Anyway, today we're finally back with the 740T5 engine swap project. <laughs> that name is way too long. We need to change that. Uh, from now on let's just call it the 740 project. Today we're gonna take the parts that you can't see because they're out of frame and we're gonna put them on the engine. We're going to assemble the engine completely so that we know which parts we're gonna use, which parts we need to restore, maybe we need to buy something, uh, which bolts we're gonna use, and then we're just gonna remove everything again, restore it, make it nice, modify stuff, and then we can do the final assembly in a few weeks. All right, let's get started. Sorry about the shirt, I know it's too small. Anyway, we're going to get started on the front of the engine. We're going to put the pulley back on. We're going to put the alternator on. We're going to put AC pump, servo pump on this bracket right here and see if all that works. And we'll start there and we'll just go around the motor and uh, let's get started with the, uh, let's get started with the cam belt pulley, the lower cam belt pulley. I'm going to put some oil on here because it's very, it's kind of rusty and it was very hard to remove. Ooh, wheelie. This is just standard engine oil, nothing special. Okay, let's see. You can only put this on one way. And you can see you have the splines right here. And there's one spline missing. So obviously you can't put it on the wrong way, which is nice. I would definitely do that. Oh, it was the right one. I was about to go get another one. Oop. Oh yeah, the engine can turn. We don't want it to do that. We definitely don't want the engine to turn because it's not zeroed. I've already turned it a little bit. These markings should align. I guess that was when I removed it. Must have moved it a little bit. Oh well, as long as you're doing it manually and don't force it with tools. Now you can break the valves and, uh, and that wouldn't be very good. So we have this piece right here. I believe it went on something like this. Looks about right. Oh. We have to take all of these off. That's annoying. Somebody come get her. Carol Baskin. Get off you fucking tape. Oh, it got oily. I'm gonna dry the bolts. Here's the top tip for you. If you wanna get bolts clean, put them in a bottle, get some degreaser in there, and uh, skulk out and let that on. Okay, so I managed to get all the bolts restored. Now I just gotta find the ones I need. I guess that putting the bolts thing back didn't work, did it? Now they're all in here. But we will just have to figure it out. And unfortunately, I have lost a part. Uh, I can't really find it. It's probably around here somewhere. But until then, I took, I stole it from the uh, six cylinder engine. It's this bracket right here. Hopefully that will work. Next thing to put on here, the cam belt pulley. I did make a mark on this. Oh, I put it on the wrong way. I think, yeah. I did make a mark right there. So I made a mark on the camshaft and a mark on the wheel so I know exactly where it went.
Okay, so I just double checked that I had all these bolts and I do. So we don't have to worry about that. Now we're gonna put the timing cover on. I think, yeah. Just slides in like that. And we have a special bolt for that. It looks like this. Snug that in there. Oh, I see a problem. This is not going to work. Well, this piece right here that I took from the six cylinder is definitely not going to work because it's going to hit the wheel here because we have quite a lot more threads to go. And it's definitely going to be interfering here. So we're going to need to find the one I lost right there. That's a shame. I kind of like that. The steel one. Because I know the other one is in plastic, but I guess we're going to have to live with that. Okay, next up we're going to do the alternator AC pump servo pump. Because this is where I think we might get into some problems. Okay, so this is where it kind of gets messy. What I was going for is I wanted the 960 stuff on there. I wanted the 960 alternator. I wanted the 960 servo pump. I wanted the 960 AC pump because they're all made for real wheel drive. So I desperately wanted them to fit on there. Um, but of course they didn't, nothing fit on there. Um, either you got problems at the crank pulley or you got problems with the intake or the pulley for the servo. Uh, I just couldn't figure it out. So what I wound up doing was using everything stock, like the engine came uh, with the V70 uh, servo pump, alternator and AC. And we're just gonna have to make that work somehow, unfortunately. Uh, there was just no way I could get that 960 stuff on there. Maybe you can get him on there on the older blocks, but on this one, no, there's no way. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that before we continue on with this clip. Oh, that pump is a pisser offer. Why doesn't it do what I want to do? I couldn't make it fit. I couldn't make it fit. Now it's back to stock and we're just going to continue with the assembling the engine, so to speak. We're leaving the servo pump now because I'm, I'm done with that now. I am done with that. All right. Well, I made a mess in here. Jesus. Let's continue. I have the whole oil pan to assemble as well. Oh, geez. Guess I'll be up all night, huh? Okay. I'm going to try to explain what is going on here. This funny looking thing is the crankcase ventilation system, I would suppose you would call it. Um, most people don't worry about this. They just remove it. And you remove it by using the 960 thermostat housing because that one does not have the water output for the heating line to heat the crankcase ventilation. Uh, this is the stock thermostat housing. It does have the output for the water. Uh, this water, you know, it gets hot, obviously, and it prevents ice blockage in the crankcase ventilation system because you get the, um, the condensation on the inside of the pipes. And if that gets stuck, you know, it's, it's a very bad idea to have the crankcase ventilation system clogged because that can cause all kinds of problems. Um, you can shoot gaskets and whatnot, so that's not a good idea. But, I mean, usually these cars are not driven in the winter, so it's usually not a problem if you just remove it. But I figured, why not? We're probably not gonna run this engine very hard. We're definitely not gonna run it in the winter, but I, want to try to keep things as stock as possible and 
this water pipe that runs out here and goes to the end of the cylinder head, I don't know, I mean, I'm not the engineer who built this engine. I don't know if that flow of water has any impact on the circulation of water in the cylinder head. So maybe we make damage by removing that water pipe. I don't know. It's kind of hard to get that information today. So I'm just gonna try to keep this as stock as possible. And to do that, we're just going to modify this pipe from this end right here. You can probably not see this, but you have two pipes coming out of this one. One is for the heating hose and one is the crankcase ventilation system or the crankcase ventilation hose. Uh, so we're basically gonna make it custom from this point on until the small section of pipe before the turbo. That's where we will mod this part right here. We're gonna mod this in there somehow. We'll get to that. Uh, I'll show you guys once the engine is in the car because that's probably when I've gotten to that stage. But to make a long story short, we're keeping the stock crankcase ventilation system for right now. I might bump into some trouble with this further on in the assembly here and we might have to remove it. I don't know, but that is my thought right now anyway. Uh, so let's put that behind us and continue on with the intake. Okay, so that's how that will look. And I think that's gonna work out just fine. Good. That looks nice. Let's get the intake on there. We also have engine brackets. These are from ASS, which stands for Anderson Steel and Speed. Anyway, these are supposed to be plug and play. Uh, although this one is the other side. And you know, it kind of does, but it doesn't really. Because it's hitting the, uh, the bracket for the, the alternator stuff. Half a centimeter, I guess. So that is something we're gonna have to do. We're gonna have to file a little bit on the bracket here in order for this to clear. I don't know how many variants there are, but there is probably a hundred different variants of this engine uh, throughout the years. So, I mean, it's very hard to make a product that fits exactly everything. So, without any modification at all. So, in this case, we're going to have to take off a little bit off the bracket, but that is fine. Okay, and I don't know if I told you guys what we're gonna do electronic wise, like with the engine management system and the wiring and all that stuff, but the wiring will be bought as a kit for this engine, uh, like a T5 swap kit. Uh, it's kind of a relatively new company that's gonna deliver it, but uh, we'll get more into that when we get closer. Engine management wise, we're gonna run max ECU race and we're also, and this one is a big worry of mine, <laughs> uh, we're going to run with an electronic throttle body. We're not gonna use wires. Well, not, not those kind of wires anyway. Uh, why would you wanna do that? Well, primarily it's because it's 2020 now and we can't I mean, we got to do something, right? We can't keep going with these wires and mechanical crap. And as a bonus, it bolts right onto the intake. You don't have to weld anything. You don't have to make dodgy brackets that are, that are going to break. Uh, everything is just going to run smoothly. Basically. Well, we'll see about that, right? Yeah, we will see about that. I mean, it's not very common. I know people are starting to do it right now. I have some support in the subject, so 
I think we're gonna pull it off. Anyway, that is the plan. Okay guys, since it's getting pretty late, I'm just gonna haul ass on this. I'm gonna turn the camera off and we'll come back because, I mean, the hard part is done, right? With the, the, uh, the belts and stuff. And, you know, we fucked up on that one. So just keep it stock and it'll work, basically. Uh, yeah, so I'm gonna turn the camera off. I'm gonna work my ass off on this and then we'll come back once I have everything I think I need in place and then we'll go through it. Okay, so I've gotten a little bit through the assembly here, but it's time to get the oil pan on. Since I don't really know where the dipstick's gonna go, and I don't wanna make, I don't wanna have any trouble with that one. Okay, now we can get going on the ah, oil. Oh, that's a lot of bolts. My goodness. Okay, so we're about to take the oil pan off. I have not seen the inside of this engine, so this is gonna be very exciting. Maybe we can all, you know, just go home after this. If this turns out to be crap, I'm going to bed. Uh, looks decent. Okay. So, let's see if the new oil pan fits on here. I'm gonna get this one off first. <coughs> well, that is spot on. I gotta say, that's really good. Glad we did this one seriously. So I gotta remember three gaskets under here. I'm just gonna tighten this these ones up just in case I forget it. <laughs> yeah, you can definitely plug this thing up. You don't need that anymore since the uh, stock one doesn't have it either. It's on beautifully. It's a little bit wobbly. It's a little bit, but I think that will straighten out once we get it torqued down. Well, I don't have a lot more parts laying around. So, it's three o'clock in the morning right now and I gotta go to bed, basically. Um, there are a few things that we need to address. One of which you can see right now, I believe, kind of. One of them is this pipe right here. This one we're gonna fix pretty soon. Uh, we need to move this bracket right here uh, to about right here. We'll probably shorten it around here and just bring it down. This one, which I mean, it's it's way too long. You know, it's still the six cylinder length. So we're gonna shorten this by 91 millimeters, I believe it is, um, to make that fit. That's a problem. The turbo is gone. It is completely trash. 
and so is the manifold. So we're not going to use any of this. And as for the turbo, I have a little special thing going on there, so I'm not going to reveal too much, but we're not going to get too much into the turbo or the oil return lines or the feed lines, because that will be taken care of. This is where the oil feed line comes from. It goes up here. But we're not going to use this. Well, we're going to use this, but we're not going to use the stock one. Um, oil filter. I will need to get an adapter here. I have the part number for that. I will also have to buy a short oil filter for now until I get a hold of the V6 um, sway bar. Because the oil filter here is going to hit the sway bar if you have the big filter. So there's a short one av available that will clear it if you have some distancing on the sway bar. So that's something we need to check. Uh, engine mounts on this side. Uh, I only got two bolts in there. This one right here is not tapped and we will need to get some distancing done over here to get another bolt in. And we might do that one, I don't know. I think three or four bolts is enough. Um, but yeah, that, that is an issue. Other than that, I just gotta find my plastic thing here that I lost. And also the, the, the fuel rail is not really suited for a rear wheel drive application. We're gonna have to do something about that as well. I can't turn it like that because then the water pipe's gonna hit the engine stand. Okay, so let's let's just turn this around. Don't laugh at me if I get the engine on my foot. Although, I don't know, I'm not gonna say too much about this. I might be able to fix this uh, and get this to work. Yeah. Yeah, we might, we might fix that. Thank you guys for watching. We're over 700 subscribers now. I can't believe it. I don't know why, basically. I thought my goal when I started this channel in what was it, February or something? Uh, or, well, I didn't start the channel then. I started it in 2006, but it doesn't matter. Like when I decided I was going to upload vid videos on a regular basis and make it a hobby. My goal was to get a thousand subscribers within one year. That was my goal. And I really do believe we can make that uh, without any bigger issues unless I completely fuck things up. But thank you guys for all the support, all the comments, all the likes. I feel very privileged. Until next time, have a good day, have a good week, and I'll see you in the next clip. Bye, hey.